What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome to my channel. And today, I'm going to be going over my Week 9 Top 25. What felt like maybe a slower week uh, than what it was like in Week 8. Or in Week 7, I should say, this past week. Week 8 felt slower than Week 7, is what I'm trying to say. Although there were a lot of big, impactful games that not only, that not only are going to shape the playoff race, but shaped my Top 25 there as well. So we got a lot more movement couple new teams entering the poll this week as well. So you want to be sure you find out who those are. A couple of them are actually on screen. But for those of you guys that haven't been on my channel before, really suggest you hit that subscribe button. I post talk a lot about college football, post live updates when I can on Saturdays there as well. Um, I'll just really love talking about college football. So if you like to support the channel, like, comment, subscribe, share my videos, really anything you can. Help support the channel means a lot to me. We ha are going to have the first college football playoff committee rankings, I believe, coming out next week. So that's how you know we're starting to get towards the end of the season. This next week is actually the last week of October. So, hey, uh, the last full college football weekend in October, uh, definitely going to be a very interesting week. Let's go ahead and take a look now at some teams that just barely missed out. This is the others receiving votes category, if you will couple teams that lost last week. Uh, you had Texas, Mississippi State, both drop out of my poll. They both just barely uh, uh, missed out on this edition of the top 25. Uh, Baylor also missed out on the top 25 there as well. Speaking of another team in the Big 12, uh, they are pretty darn close at breaking back in to the top 25. Um, uh, again, want to see uh, some more from Baylor, but I think we all know that this can be a top 25 caliber team. A couple teams uh, along with Mississippi State, I should say, out of the SEC. Yeah, Arkansas there as well. A game they have to win this week, but they're starting to pick it up and play better after that three-game slide. Got a team out of the Big Ten here as well. Uh, Maryland uh, has entered that fray. Uh, again, Maryland, this close to entering uh, the poll. They just got to do a little bit more. And uh, keep winning ball games. Couple teams out of the Pac-12 here. You got Washington and Oregon State. Both of them pretty close to getting in to the top 25. Oregon State probably closer than Washington State is because uh, the Beavs are playing some really good football right now. And then lots of Group of Five representation this week. We got Coastal Carolina. We got UTSA. We got Liberty, and we got Troy on the board there as well. I think Troy's playing some really good football right now. I believe they're six and two up to this point. Um, and definitely looking like with Louisiana struggles, definitely looking like Troy is on their way to a conference title game. So, uh, hey, knock on wood. My desk is wood. Uh, so, hey, knock on wood, but Troy's playing some really good football right now, moving their way towards a conference title, as is Coastal Carolina. So maybe there's your conference title game right there already on the board. I, I don't know. Not going to predict things too early, but the way those two teams are playing, pre playing really well. Speaking of teams playing well, Liberty on the board just thrashed BYU last week. They knocked BYU off of the honorable mention list. And I mean, BYU getting really, really close. Or, or, or not BYU, Liberty, my apologies, getting really, really close to cracking my top 25. But who did make my top 25? Uh, well, here you go. Here is my top 25. We're going to start out. Uh, there are a couple new teams here on this list, but uh, South Carolina is now on this list here. They enter in at number 25. The Gamecocks were able to beat Texas A&M last week. South Carolina also has a win over Kentucky this year and currently uh, sit third in the SEC East behind, of course, uh, the undefeated likes of Tennessee and Georgia, uh, who both are top five teams. And you'll see there wasn't a lot of movement as we get more towards uh, the top of the board. But South Carolina's really impressed me up to this point. I think Spencer Rattler started to find that groove. He has a lot of weapons on the offensive end. That defense playing well as well. So South Carolina really picking things up now. And I believe they're the 25th best team in the nation. But I'll be honest with you, that 25th spot came down to South Carolina, Maryland, Liberty, and Oregon State. I mean, all four of those teams really, really close. But just with the resume and the way teams are playing right now, had to go with South Carolina uh, as they have a couple really nice wins on that schedule. So the Gamecocks ranked for the first time in my poll this year. Kansas State staying ranked. They are at number 24. And um, I have them down three spots from last week after that loss to TCU. The reason they did not drop out 
of my poll. They were at 21 last week. The re reason they did not drop out, uh, the in injuries plagued uh, that quarterback room on Saturday, and I know you have to play through the injuries and you have to play with what you have and all those other cliche sayings, uh, but Kansas State put up a really good fight against TCU. They just fell apart as that game went along. So Kansas State's got another big one this week against Oklahoma State. You lose that one, you probably drop out of my top 25, uh, and then even more questions start to be raised about, well, was this Kansas State team really worth ranking? But uh, I mean, at the time, yes, obviously this is a really good football team. When they're healthy, Deuce Vaughn's really good. Adrian Martinez really good. But they, they got to get healthy uh, before some of these bigger games coming up on the schedule. Again, Oklahoma State coming up this week. NC State did not move from last week, so they stay here at number 23. Again, going to be really hard to judge what NC State is going to be the rest of the way. I believe uh, Coleman, that quarterback, filling in for Devin Leary, who has a uh, season-ending uh, pec surgery, uh, I believe it is. Going to be really hard to judge NC State from this point forward, uh, basing that, hey, this is not necessarily the best of this team. But again, injuries are part of the sport of football. But even without Devin Leary, uh, I still believe that with how good this defense is, this is still a top 25 team in America. And uh, right now, again, on that fringe, uh, but I still have them ranked here. They are at number 23 later down the line. Uh, you got to go play Wake Forest. So that's going to be an interesting game there. Uh, Tulane is now ranked for the first time as they pretty much throttled Memphis. Memphis made a, a comeback effort late, but I think Tulane was up, what, 35 nothing in that game before it started to get close there. So uh, Tulane is the real deal. And with the loss uh, to of uh, UCF uh, this past week with East Carolina beating them, I mean, Tulane's got a really nice shot. Now, it, it's not an easy road. They have a bye week this week, and there are some really hard games coming up. I believe you still have to play. UCF. I think SMU is on that schedule. Cincinnati is on there as well. So Tulane has got some really hard games coming up on the schedule. So these last four games for Tulane after the bye week are not going to be easy, but this is absolutely deservingly of a top 25 team. They were pretty miserable last year and uh, they've rebounded in a very, very big way. North Carolina is up three spots here to number 21. Love the way that Drake May is playing. North Carolina is playing really, really well and uh, had to move them up. Uh, three spots from where they were this past week. Um, I absolutely love the way that North Carolina is playing, especially Drake May, right? And he's only a freshman, so things are only seemingly going to get better for this North Carolina team. So, hey, really excited to see what North Carolina does coming off of this bye week that they just had. Uh, and again, I don't really move teams up or down that much unless teams above you fall, which is exactly what happened. So that's why North Carolina went up three spots. Um, <clears throat> uh, I believe they have, yeah, so they have Pitt coming out of the bye week. We'll see what happens there. Should be interesting. Moving in to the top 20, Cincinnati is now starting to climb the ranks. They're up five spots from last week. Uh, they were in control of that SMU game for the most part. SMU made a comeback effort late, but Cincinnati able to hold on, uh, and they improved to 6-1 and one on the year. This definitely looks like the best group of five team out there, especially after last week with, UCF losing, and um, of course Cincinnati being able to win against SMU. Um, Cincinnati definitely looks like the best group of five team that's out there right now. Uh, I defy you to tell me that I am wrong with that statement um, because the, with the way that Houston has struggled, Coastal Carolina's had a couple shaky performances. Um, Troy is relatively new entering the frame. I think Cincinnati's the best group of five team that's out there right now, uh, and that's why they are in my top 20. Illinois is at number 19. They were on bye week this past week, uh, and that is why they dropped the spot. They just had teams jump them. Uh, now, a, a fairly tricky road game coming up here against Nebraska. This has been a different Husker team in um, these last couple games since Mick Mickey Joseph took over. They're just playing with more energy, more poise. Uh, so Illinois, I think, is going to have a little bit of a tough time of it uh, on the road in Lincoln. But when you step back and look at the Illini overall, Chase Brown's having a really, really good year. That defense is playing really well for Illinois. I believe they are they lead the country in fewest yards per game allowed. So th that is a really, really, uh, really nice uh, metric to be leading if you are the fighting uh, Illini. 
No reason this shouldn't be a top 20 team. I got them sitting here at 19. Syracuse is at 18, and they played Clemson really, really well. This is just simply the case of, and, and I also think it shows you how close a lot of these teams really are this year because you can make an argument why Syracuse should still be in the top 15, and I'm not going to sit here and disagree with you. It's just a lot of these teams are really, really close uh, in the fact that um, when I do these rankings, I also like to think out like, okay, who would beat who on a neutral field, or who do I think would beat who on a neutral field if they played today? Uh, and I, I feel like Sarah, uh, teams just rose above Syracuse, but again, not by a wide margin. Back to the point. Syracuse played Clemson really, really well. Uh, th this is a, a very complete team. That defense is playing lights out. Uh, really good stuff I saw from Syracuse, especially in that first half. They just couldn't go 60 minutes uh, with Clemson. Started to fall apart a little bit towards the end. Ended up losing the game. No shame. Syracuse is here to stay in the in the ACC, at least for this season. Uh, and we'll see uh, how Syracuse finishes out 2022. LSU, after beating Ole Miss, jump in the fray here at number 17. Really, really like the way that LSU is playing right now. Jaden Daniels, after being scrutinized early, fans calling for Garrett Nussmeyer to come in. LSU has played some really, really good football as of late, they were able to walk away with a 25-point win at home against the previously uh, unbeaten Ole Miss Rebels. Uh, so really good stuff I saw from LSU. They got a bye week this week before, I mean, just a monstrous matchup uh, here in, in a couple weeks in Death Valley against the Alabama Crimson Tide. And Bama's looked vulnerable this year, so LSU can definitely get that win. Uh, Bama, of course, obviously is going to be the big favorite there in that one, but that's going to be a very exciting game. So LSU has uh, an extra week to prepare and rest for that one. But what a win uh, for Brian Kelly and company coming off uh, the win there against Ole Miss. Kentucky uh, was also on a bye week, so uh, they did not move. Um, they did not move uh, at all. So I kept Kentucky here at number 16. And um, hey, hey, man, look. Kentucky definitely, or actually, I believe I had Kentucky at 17 last week. So I do believe Kentucky ended jumping up one spot. That's a mistake on my part. Um, the, the, uh, I believe Kentucky ended up rising one spot. So that's a mistake on my part. But regardless, Kentucky around that 16, that 15 to 17 range, in my opinion. Yeah, they have a couple shaky loss on there. But when this team has Will Levis and Chris Rodriguez playing at a high level and that defense is playing well, this is definitely one of the better teams in the nation and could be one of the better teams in the, the SEC. Uh, I believe currently are sitting fourth in the SEC East because of the tiebreaker against South Carolina. Uh, but Kentucky playing really, really well. And hey, I mean, a huge road game coming up for Kentucky this week against the University of Tennessee. That's a monster game coming up this week. I uh, can't wait to talk about that one uh, here in a couple days when I do my weekly pre uh, preview. But uh, preview and prediction, but hey, th this Kentucky team, when they have everything together and everything clicking, they're really good. We'll see uh, how they've prepared for Tennessee now uh, coming off that bye week there at 16. Moving into the top 15, uh, Wake Forest find themselves up. Okay, so th th this said they rise rise up two spots. So I probably did have Kentucky at 16 uh, last week. Again, I can't quite remember, uh, but I'm going to trust what uh, the slide said earlier. So Wake Forest jumping up two spots here into the top 15. Wake Forest, I, again, I, I've had questions with this, Wake For with this Wake Forest team, and they are just getting better and better and better. So, uh, hey, this Wake Forest group right here, um, I feel is a pretty good unit. Uh, uh, again, defensively, I still want to see some, some minor things get better. Uh, but overall, I like the way the offense is playing. I like the way Wake Forest is overall playing. It's just... I think it's really hard to rank teams because I do believe that the teams that are above of Wake Forest right now would beat them. Um, and the, the, again, I think they'd be pretty darn close games, but that's just how I rank teams. So Wake Forest, really good team. They're going to have a couple interesting games coming up here uh, later on. Uh, ended up beating Boston College pretty handedly this week. You got to go on the road to play Louisville. So that could be a potential trap game right there for uh, Wake Forest. So we'll see what happens there, but I like the way the Demon Deacons uh, are playing right now, like the way Dave Clawson has this group prepared. They're here at number 15. UCLA, after pretty much being um, um, 
pretty much being dominated by the Oregon Ducks this past weekend. Uh, only fall five spots. They are here at number 14. They were nine last week. They suffered their first loss on the year. Uh, hey, that's a really good Oregon team there. You'll see that evident once we get into my top 10. Uh, but look, Syracuse, not Syracuse. What am I saying? Um, sorry, I was looking over at the schedule and Syracuse was over there. Um, UCLA, very good group. Hey, they battled against Oregon for all for all they could, and they just weren't able to pull away with the win. So they get Stanford next week, so you should get back on track and get back in the win column there as that game is played at home. Um, but UCLA, very good team. Probably didn't play their best game against Oregon. I look for them uh, to rebound, maybe have a lot better performances in the coming week. So watch out for the Bruins uh, coming up here uh, if you still have them on the schedule. And, hey, they still have a big clash with their uh, rivals in Southern California and USC. So that's going to be a very interesting game to watch. I uh, believe that that game takes place um, in Week 12. I could be wrong. Yep, that game takes place in Week 12. That would be the 19th. So, uh, hey, so, some late matches, uh, some big matches coming up for UCLA, although their next, I believe, three games are Stanford, Arizona State, and Arizona. So, uh, stuff gets a little easier for UCLA before you jump into the game against USC. Should be able to get back in the win column and absolutely still a contender for a New Year's Six spot and a spot in the Pac-12 championship game. Penn State is here at number 13. They rise up two spots from where they were this past week as they barely survived uh, staying into the top 15 after that loss against Michigan. Penn State still a good football club. They showed it this past week when they were able to fend off Minnesota. Pretty Easily, I know Minnesota did not have Tanner Morgan in that game, which definitely hurt um, Minnesota's chances. But Penn State did a fairly solid job of limiting what Mo Ibrahim could do. Uh, the, at least in retrospect, when you go back and look at how much they gave up against the Michigan Wolverines, uh, over 14, what am I saying? Over 400 rushing yards allowed against Michigan. Uh, and against Minnesota, uh, they still allowed 165, 102 to Mo Ibrahim, including a touchdown, but only limited the star running back to 3.4 yards per carry. So, hey, that run defense definitely got better. Their offense was clicking as well. And a huge game coming up this week against Ohio State, and a, a team that a lot of people think is one of, if not the best team in the entire nation. So a huge game coming up for Penn State. We'll see how they play the Scarlet and Gray. Ole Miss is here at number 12. They dropped five spots after their loss this past week to the LSU Tigers. This Ole Miss team has played really solid up until that game. So, hey, one bad performance on the road in a tough environment. Not going to penalize them too much. I think Jackson Dart playing well. The team did also not have Zach Evans in LSU. And, again, I know football is a game with injuries. you got to play with what you got. Uh, Ulysses Bentley played all right. Um, you had that freshman Judkins play fairly well for them there as well. But, hey, Jackson Dart... Uh, definitely was not his best day throwing the ball for uh, the Ole Miss Rebels. Hey, Judkins was really, really good. Bentley was there, I think had one carry. Um, uh, uh, Judkins had a really good game, uh, as did Malik Heath there as well. So there are still really good things to look on for Ole Miss. They just got overpowered by LSU, and that's why they ended up dropping that game. USC is here at number 11. I got to go a little bit quicker through these, but USC here at number 11. Uh, they rise up one spot from where they were this past week. They were on by uh, this past week here uh, and this week. They get to go on the road against Arizona. Not a game that USC can overlook, mind you. Arizona's a much improved team from past years. Definitely have the capabilities to give USC a little bit of a scare. But when you look at the Trojans overall, I mean, they're playing some really good football uh, right now. Coming off that game against Utah, they got two weeks to fix their mistakes, and now going into a game that really they should be able to win against uh, the Arizona Wildcats here. But again, a game that you cannot overlook. So I definitely think that's going to be an interesting game to watch, and we'll definitely see what happens. But USC, still a team very much alive for not only a Pac-12 championship and a New Year's Six spot, but possibly the college football playoff if they can win out and be maybe somewhat impressive in doing so. Uh, but see what happens down the road. USC barely missing out on my top 10. Let's move into my top 10 now where I do have the Utah Utes. Look, despite the two losses that Utah sees, 
They're the highest ranked two loss team that you see on my list. And uh, I know the national media and most other people are not too high on this Utah team. But I think when Utah is playing their best, most high level football, this is a really tough Utah team to stop. When Cam Rising is playing well, when you have that uh, running back room going at full strength, they have a lot of wide receivers that can step up. That defense can play a really good uh, brand and style of, of football. And when Utah is clicking on all cylinders, that's a very, very dangerous team. But they have a tricky one coming up this week. They got to go on the road uh, to take on, uh, excuse me, they also had a bye week last week as well. But they got to go on the road to take on Washington State. Again, a game that you cannot overlook. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Utah in that one. But uh, as of on by, they do jump up into the top 10 by virtue of other teams dropping below them. By other teams, I mean Ole Miss. Oklahoma State rises up four spots, so they are back into the top 10 uh, after a win here against Kansas State. Really like the way that Oklahoma State has been playing lately. This is a very good uh, Cowboys team. And, hey, uh, another big one this week coming up for Oklahoma State. Uh, they were able to fend off Texas last week in what was a come-from-behind thrilling game. And this week, you got to go on the road to play Kansas State. And I'm looking at it now. Kansas State, already the early favorite there in that one. So uh, definitely a game that Oklahoma State's got to go prove themselves a little bit here, uh, but also a game that they probably are going to have to win in order to get into a Big 12 championship spot or keep their hopes alive for a Big 12 championship spot there, I might add. So a really important game for the Cowboys coming up. We'll see how they play. TCU, a team that's beaten the Cowboys, also won uh, this past week. They beat uh, the aforementioned Kansas State Wildcats uh, in another come-from-behind effort. TCU had a come-from-behind effort to beat Oklahoma State, and they come from behind to beat TCU. Uh, coming up for TCU, a little bit of a scare here. Uh, going on the road to play West Virginia, a club capable of pulling off an upset. They've done it earlier this year. They did it against Baylor, uh, I believe, when Baylor... No, when they were 3-2, and two, I don't believe they were ranked. Were they? No, I don't believe so. Uh, still an upset in a lot of people's books. was an upset in my book. West Virginia capable of pulling off. But TCU, look, when they're playing well, hey, that defense can be really good. Max Duggan's playing at a very high level. They got they are weaponizing Quentin Johnson. Lots of good players in the backfield. TCU's a very, very good team. And right now, probably should be a lot of people's favorites to go win the Big 12 Conference. Oregon, after their impressive performance against UCLA, jump up three spots here uh, to number seven. Uh, so Oregon, I mean, just ever since that loss to Georgia to open up the season, I think a lot of people were questioning Oregon. And I believe I had them down all the way at number 25. But the reason I didn't drop them out was I believed in this Oregon team. And I believed that they could bounce back in a big way. And man, have they done that. Uh, really, really impressed with the way that Oregon is playing right now. Bo Nix seemingly has finally found a home. Uh, he is playing at a very high level. Believe had five touchdown passes in that game. Yep, had five touchdown passes in that game against UCLA. Also ran for 51 yards. But Bo Nix has finally found a home, playing at a high level. Oregon has a lot of weapons offensively and defensively. Uh, and the, 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 I mean, the Pac-12 is such a close conference right now. It's actually crazy, but Oregon, I think, definitely has taken the reins as that leading team in the Pac-12. We'll see how Oregon plays down the stretch. Uh, coming up this week, they go on the road at Cal, a team that they usually struggle with, so we'll see if Oregon can survive a scare there against Cal if they end up getting one. Uh, Alabama here at number six uh, shouldn't be much of a surprise. Alabama steamrolled through Mississippi State this past week. And, um, uh, I mean, the, like I predicted, that game just was not close. Definitely was not as high scoring as I thought it was going to be. Uh, but Bama came out with a clear message to send, and they sent it. So, definitely uh, still some big games coming up for Bama. You still got to play Ole Miss. As I mentioned, LSU still on the schedule. And then the Iron Bowl on the schedule there as well. So, still some room to go for Alabama to get to that SEC title game. Uh, but this is definitely a team that if they play like they did last week, oh man, uh, that, that's a very scary team to watch out for. They are on by coming up this week. As now we move into the top five and uh, nothing has changed. Nothing's changed from uh, this past week. This week did not really have a lot of impact to the top five, although this week might. So 
Uh, Clemson is on by, so Clemson really shouldn't move uh, from that number five position uh, after this week. Tennessee, hey, they stay at home and play Kentucky, but a game that Tennessee's got to watch out for, right? Tennessee, very much capable of dropping that, or uh, I should phrase it this way, Tennessee very much capable of going into Knoxville and winning that game. When Kentucky is playing at their best, uh, Tennessee's definitely vulnerable, especially on the defensive side, but that offense, man, uh, it was able to outscore Bama. It's definitely going to be able to outscore Kentucky, but that's going to be an interesting game there to watch, and we'll see um, how how much of a challenge Kentucky's able to give them. Michigan coming up this week, uh, I do believe, has Michigan State, and um, I know Michigan State's going to be looking to get into some wins, but Michigan, I mean, the game is in the big house. Michigan's playing at such a high level right now. That's why they are my number three team in the entire nation. Um, and uh, coming off a bye week last week, uh, Michigan got some extra time to prepare for Michigan State. Michigan State also coming off a bye week there as well. So they both got some extra time to prepare for one another. So we will definitely see what happens there with that game. That's definitely a very interesting game to watch. But uh, I mean, unless disaster strikes and Michigan State is able to shock the world, uh, Michigan should not move from this number three spot. Georgia uh, coming in this week. Hey, they got an interesting matchup here uh, as they are playing Florida this week. And uh, we know what Florida can play like when they're playing at their best, although they've been inconsistent under Billy Napier in their first year. Again, that game in a neutral site uh, in Jacksonville, pretty much uh, home field advantage there for Florida as it is staying in the state, but a neutral site game there in Jacksonville, uh, 2.30 on CBS. Going to be, I think, a fairly entertaining game to watch. And uh, we'll see, because uh, Georgia is that number one team in most polls right now. Um, again, obviously, you see I have a different number one team, but Georgia, number one in the AP, number one in the coaches. And the defending national champs look every bit as good, and they are playing the part really well. Uh, so can't argue with it too much. I just happen to believe that Ohio State is the most complete team in the nation. Now, I know some people are going to look at last weekend. If you are an Ohio State fan and you're on this channel and you watch my Ohio State fan reaction, you heard me say this as well, um, and I may have overreacted a bit. But don't be that guy. Don't come out and say that, well, now we know. Ohio State's offense is terrible when they go up and play a good defense. This offense is going to be fine. This offense is going to thrive. This is one of, if not the best offense in all of college football, and this defense is much improved. They're second in uh, the nation in fewest yards per game, and I know they haven't really played a super dynamic offense yet, but already just a huge improvement from uh, this past week, and I'm going to reiterate something that I've heard around. Uh, there's just some things that you know, and I know some people, and you can talk about that with multiple of these teams. Like You could even talk about that with Michigan here as well. You could to some extent, talk about that with Clemson. You could, to some extent, talk about that with Georgia, maybe besides that game against Oregon, but it, it's the who who have they played card. And um, th th that card is problematic from day one. If you have to play that card, uh, I mean, you just don't know what you're talking about. There's just some things that you know, like Ohio State's a top five team, Michigan's a top five team, Clemson, Georgia, Tennessee. These are the top five teams in America. So, uh, don't play that who have they played card because there are some things you just know. But Ohio State's going to get a really good test this week when they go on the road in Happy Valley to play the Penn State Nittany Lions. Uh, so that's definitely going to be a very interesting game there. I think the opening line on that, uh, let me look, is Ohio State by 15 and a half. So betters really liking the Buckeyes when they go on the road to play Penn State. Definitely going to be a good test for this Buckeye squad. But that's going to do it for my week nine top 25. Hey, this is definitely going to be another interesting week in college football. And hey, but if there's going to be any week for chaos to reign, it's going to be this week coming up in week nine. But there was my top 25. Let me know your top 25 down in the comment section below. And as always, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. See all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.